Well, thank you for joining me. This is Dr. Jason W. Morrison, theologist. New South Wales, Australia, speaking on the reason religious criminal abuse. And you'll see in the picture a girl with a hand over half of her face showing the shame and the guilt that she's experiencing as a result of these kind of behaviours. Some of the identifying signs of um, sexual abuse, especially among children within religious organisations, um, could range, but victims of abuse are unlikely to tell anyone that they are being abused. And this is one of the hardest things for the authorities to get around, trying to help these young ones, these people that have been abused, to realise that it's okay to tell because one of the things that these perpetrators do is swear secrecy. They make these young ones that have been abused swear secrecy. And therefore, when the authorities get these children um, under the under the investigation aspect of trying to charge these pedophiles, one of the difficulties that they have is um, helping these children to realise that it's okay to tell to tell on these people because they may think they are in a loving relationship or a friendship with these, these perpetrators. Or even, in some cases, they may not think they have any choice. And that's why it's so vital to be able to spot the signs of child exploitation, of child sexual abuse. There are many reasons for changes in the behaviour of a child or young person, but if you notice a combination of worrying signs, it is time to seek help or advice, or even the authorities. If a child or young person is a victim of grooming, say blackmail or sexual abuse, they may show some or all of the following signs. Are you ready? Number one. Regular absences from school, missing training, work or other activities. Number two, going missing for long periods or appearing at school extremely fatigued. Number three, being dishonest about where they've been and whom they've been with. Number four. Developing an unusual close connection with an older person. Number five. Displaying mood changes, hyperactive, secretive, hostile, aggressive, impatient, resentful, anxious, withdrawn or depressed. Number six. Using street, different language or copying the way a new friend may speak. That's a personality disorder type thing, isn't it? Seven, taking a, talking about new friends who don't belong to their normal social circle. Number eight, presenting at school with gifts or money given by these new friends. It's a good one, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Having large amounts of money which they cannot account for. 11. Using a new mobile phone, possibly given to them by a new friend. Excessively making calls, videos or sending text messages. 12. Being very secretive about their phone, internet and social media use. Using drugs. Physical evidence includes spoons, aluminium foil, tabs, rocks or pieces of ripped cardboard. 13. Assuming a new name. Being in possession of false identification. A stolen passport or driver's license, which is extreme, isn't it? 14. Being picked up by an older or new friend from school or down the street. 
and 15 threats to humiliate or share sexual images of victims if they don't carry out sexual acts and grooming you know is is now a criminal offense under the crimes act and this offense targets predatory conduct undertaken by an adult to prepare a child under the age of 16 to engage in a sexual activity at a later time now if we turn to the scriptures and we'll do that now we've been trying to find out and i think we're doing a good job what the reason is behind well um, intending good honest devoted religious people with every intention never to do wrong and to overcome evil performing evil acts it is contrary to our it's paradoxical to our mind to believe or even conceive that we could believe somebody good like a minister or a priest could do such a diabolical thing but history has shown us time and time again that it happens all the time and so with what we're trying to show you is or what i'm trying to show you is sin's advantage over us in the law and you should know the definition of the law by now anything we think we need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. We are not under the law. The law hasn't been a means of salvation for over 2,000 years. But us Westerners come into Christianity and try and, you know, make God happy or stop him from being sad only to turn ourselves evil by a power that we don't know about or understand, even though it's in the pages of the Bible it's in black and white. I mean, this is such a chameleon. It is such a mastermind of camouflage. It can make itself stealth in broad daylight. It's almost invisible. It's almost impossible for people to see what the Bible is trying to tell them in Romans chapter 7 specifically, and other parts of the Bible as well. So Paul says, what shall we say then? Who is the we, specifically? The Jewish believers of that time. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. This is the argument, isn't it? There's nothing wrong with the law. The problem's the sinful, evil desire that dwells in us. That's what the problem is. It's not the law. Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. In other words, the law's the like a um, a manual, a mechanic's manual for a car. It tells you what you're not supposed to do, but it doesn't guarantee you won't do it. Um, in fact, as a matter of fact, there is no guarantee you won't do it. And so Paul says, For I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said covetousness. You shall not covet. Covetousness would never have been identified the way that it is if the law hadn't have shown it for what it was. But showing it for what it was and trying not to do that when it's inside us is impossible. We are going to fall. The harder we try to keep the law, the more evil we become. And that's paradoxical, but that's the way that it is. But because, here we go. Are you ready? Are you strapped down? Are you got your ears open and you're thinking on? Because this is contrary to everything you have been told. But sin, that's our sinful, evil nature, which is able to deceive us into doing evil even when we think we're doing good. It's so powerful, it makes evil look good. We don't even, can't, we can't even comprehend that we're doing it. And that's no excuse. 
because sin takes opportunity. How does sin, this is, it's so black and white. How does sin take opportunity over us? By the commandment, but what's the definition of the commandment? The things we think we need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad outside of or alongside of the finished work of Christ. It's the finished work of Christ only. Nothing else has anything to do with Christianity. And so sin doesn't only just take opportunity when we think there's something we need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. This is the reason here. Sin takes opportunity by the commandment, by the things we think we need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. It causes people to produce all manner of evil desire. Yes, that's why there's pedophilia in the churches. Yes, that's why pastors murder their wives for the worship singer. Yes, that's why people leave one person for another. Yes, that's why there's backbiting in the church. Yes, that's why the minister's playing with the children the wrong way. That's why the people in the congregation are fighting and arguing. That's what it does. That's what it does. If we look at sins in the... Oh, I'm on the wrong thing, sorry. Oh dear, I messed that up. Let me go back. Just bear with me. I'm on the run here. That produces all manner of evil. Now, if we look at this, sins in the Bible, and we'll get a list of them, hopefully. Um, what we've got to realize is sexual immorality um, is one of the big ones. Uh, what does the Bible say? Okay, so we've got all sorts of things going on about sin in the Bible. We all sin. It's a part, fact and part of human nature. Our world is falling and corrupt because of sin. It is impossible to never sin. If anyone says they have never committed any iniquity, they are outright liars. And so this goes on. Um, there's some sayings here about sin. One leak will sink a ship. One sin will destroy a sinner. Killing be killing sin or it will be killing you. One great power of sin is that it blinds men so that they do not recognize its true character. And how does it blind men? Because it produces all manner, manner of evil desire when we think we need to do something or not do something to make God happy or stop him from being sad. Because for apart from sin, um, for apart from the law, Sin was dead. How, you want sin to be dead inside you? What do you do? You walk in the liberty and the freedom of Christ. It almost sounds rebellious, doesn't it? And you could feel that way, really. I mean, you've got to be so liberated and trust yourself so, excuse me, so much to believe that everything's all right between yourself and God that you can go about your life as long as you're not harming yourself or anybody else and everything's okay. It's that simple. Verse 9. I was alive once without the law. Okay? Some people are better off away from Christianity. I mean, the nature of some people is to just dig so deep into things they're delving into Pandora's box. And the next thing, instead of being good, they're downright evil. Now, I don't know if you've ever met anyone that this has happened to, but I have. And, and, and it's, it's, it's tragic. It's, excuse me, it's catastrophic what this can do to pull a person apart and destroy them. But when the commandment came, sin revived. And I die. The commandment revives sin. And when he says I died, this is the influence of the sinful nature overtaking his mind, our conscientious mind. 
it leaks in and starts to do evil. It's quite horrible, isn't it? When you think about it, we don't even know that we're doing it. Oh my gosh. This is the reason why these people dressed up as priests and ministers and the ones in the churches that are doing this, um, particularly Jehovah Witnesses and other things like that, have no idea the evil that they're up to. But they're still guilty. Evil's evil. It doesn't matter what picture you want to paint to try and justify it. You cannot justify evil. The Bible has warned that this is happening. So in, as far as I'm concerned, in a court of law, you're, you're guilty because it's all been warned. If you haven't been taught properly, then that's negligence on your part. Because you're being... It, it's there. The, it's all there. Do not play with the commandments because you will become evil. It's that simple. And the commandment which was to bring life, I found to bring death. Now, here we go. For sin taking occasion, how? By the commandment. And what was the result? It deceived him. It deceived him what? From doing good to doing evil. And by it killed me. Now he wasn't dead. So what does that mean? It overtook his mind. It started to control his thoughts. But the law is holy and the commandment is holy, just and good. But we are not. This is the reason for religious sin. For what happens in these churches. I'm giving you the reason. All you that don't know. I'm giving you the reason. This is the reason. I mean, it's all right to get on there and try and, you know, all oh, this, all oh, that. Well, what is the reason? Well, I'm giving it to you. I just keep giving it and giving it, and it's like people just don't want to hear it. They just do not want to hear it. This is where things like... Um, hang on. I need to fix that. Um, hang on. Here, let's have a look at this. This is what things like um, adultery, anger, arrogance, bitterness, blasphemy, boasting, brutality, carousing, clamor, complaining, conceit, coveting, cowardice, deceit, defrauding, denying, Desiring the praise of men, disobedience to parents, divisions, divorce, drinking parties, drunkenness. Just on divorce, there is legitimate reason for divorce, if you're struggling with that. And the list goes right on, all the way down to um, wrath. These are the lists of sins. Okay, and, and, and then there's an official list of sins for the New Testament as well. And it's, it's the reason for these things happening. It's not just a sociological um, fallen man aspect. This is sin empowered by religious devotion, by warped religious devotion. And this is the reason why there is so much crime, religious criminal abuse in religious organizations this is dr jason w morrison theologist new south wales australia bye for now